You know, the interesting thing when you're building online programs, at least in the initial startup phase, you're really, really concerned about stocking the shelves. If I, if I take a metaphor, you're really concerned about creating inventory. Now, any good store manager knows it's one thing to stock your shelves, it's another thing to go around and check the sell-by date on all your inventory. And one of the challenges we've faced in creating online learning in a relatively compressed, fast-paced time frame is we often don't get a chance to stop and breathe and ask ourselves, have we passed the freshness date on any of our courses? We have done some systematic course reviews. Um, two semesters ago, we went ahead and met with each faculty member that teaches online. Um, some of them in person, some of them over the phone, some of them via email. And we uh, went through the Quality Matters rubric. Um, first, they did a self-review of their courses. Um, and then we went ahead and talked to them about that self-review to see where they could make improvements. And um, a lot of the courses went through the review process and uh, were improved. We're at a point in the Swiggo in terms of program maturity where we can now stop and reflect on what's in our portfolio. How long have we been offering that course? What does that course look like? Because sometimes if that course has been iterated through two different learning management systems in its lifetime, there are some really, really weird artifacts hanging around in there for no good reason. We also talked uh, a little bit previously about the, the actual freshness of the content itself. Uh, does it actually align with the practice in that discipline today? No field, especially one that is still as relatively as young as online learning is, is, is stagnant. Uh, it's, it, even established disciplines like history, uh, it's, we constantly have new perspectives and new evidence is coming you know, to light all, all the time. And, and in a relatively young area like online learning, I think we, we are still learning so much about what works and what doesn't. Keep it fresh, keep it new. Um, it's, I think of it as a work in progress. It, it changes all the time and include current information. I use um, the Wall Street Journal, a lot of articles and questions about the articles because it relates to our, our course matter, especially e-commerce. You know, the textbooks are almost outdated by the time they're printed. A constant revision process is, is important for any instructor. Okay, uh, certainly for an online course. In an online course, we have a unique opportunity to constantly visit our content. Whereas in a face-to-face -face course, some of it might seem more fluid. But in an online course, at the end of each course, or even during each course, we're able to look at what we're currently doing with students, what we're about to do with students, what the student is about to experience, and make sure that, it, that it, those experiences are going to be as effective as possible. Um, that's one of the reasons why I love online courses is this ability to actually look at it. And uh, we, we, there are other metrics we can look at as well. We can look at how well um, students did on a particular activity. Those analytics are very accessible in an online course. So if I have a, an assignment that tanks in which students don't do well on, that helps me revise my instruction very quickly. I can reteach, I can adjust that instrument, I can do uh, lots of different things. I've scrapped whole modules and re redone them because I have a, a particular group of students that, uh, for whom I want to shift gears. And that flexibility with online teaching has been, uh, has been great. Revision can be triggered or should be triggered either by the fact that content needs updating or technology needs updating or it can be triggered by the fact that students are not achieving the learning outcomes. So there is really no specific time. I think it's incumbent on the faculty member to monitor each of those things. The currency of the content, the relevancy of the content, um, uh, whether or not useful technology tools are being employed, and then also monitor student evaluations uh, student evaluations are very important feedback for faculty to know uh, whether students are 
uh, able to find their way easily in the course, and also whether students are feeling the instructor presence is adequate, the feedback that they're getting to improve their, import, their performance is adequate, all of these things come into play. Obviously, there, there needs to be some how-to sessions that faculty get, but there's also a lot of sharing that needs to go on, I think, because if you're just doing the button pushing, they're, they're not gonna come to that. It's, they're not gonna pay attention to it. But if you can have their peers that are also teaching come in and say, I did this, I tried this, and it was great. You know, it, it changed my class. You know, it's, I, I was getting sick of this, and now I love it again. And I think those experiences, those sorts of things are, are really powerful uh, for, for a long time faculty. I do know that most, um Online programs have sort of a cycle, um, and that cycle of refresh is usually somewhere between two years and four years, uh, which I would say is pretty much about right. When a brand new faculty member starts teaching, I like to debrief with them after the first term and again after the second term, because after the second term is when they're able to make some improvements and changes, and then we can talk about how well those changes worked. Once that happens, then it's up to the faculty member really to monitor how the class is going. And if you see the engagement going down, then you know something has to be tweaked or improved or upgraded. Through the Open SUNY Plus program, we've brought our energies to bear on actually examining our existing portfolio. Uh, using the Oscar rubric, we're engaging in a review process with our faculty we're sharing our findings with them. Based on their buy-in, we're creating a work plan for improvements within that course, uh, creating a project plan for implementation, uh, a timeline. Sometimes that timeline is iterating out over a couple semesters because what we're trying to do may be large scale, but we know we can do this incrementally if we continue to work on it over time. So our biggest challenge, frankly, is to be able to engage in a regular cycle of continuous improvement while we still continue to build, because we will continue to build. That just does not stop.